there folks, welcome you all to yet another vlog of mine. It's been just two weeks since the last one, people. I'm absolutely spoiling your rotten time. <laughs> There was such a monumental gap between the last one and the one before that that this just feels ridiculously quick to be doing another one, people. But it is still Easter time, people, technically speaking. I think we're still at the tail end of the two-week Easter break that certainly we get at the college where I work. Well, I don't get a two-week Easter break, but the, the students and uh, the teaching staff get a two-week Easter break. I mean, I'm in a support role, so it's kind of different for me uh, as a programmer and coder. We're not really affected by when they actually teach. Not really. Uh, on and off, we can be as to what we're going to be doing at that particular moment in time. But usually, actually, it's a really good time for me to catch up with work because you don't get sort of peppered with people asking you for all sorts of things because a lot of them are all off on having a break. So I have, however, over the last couple of days, today and yesterday, so this is Friday, people, and um, yes, yeah, I, I took two ad hoc days off, people. I thought I, I really just wanted a couple of days to wind down, and well, the plan was to try and do some Dragon's Dogma 2 recording, people, and just chill out and enjoy some time with Max and that sort of thing. Now, this video is going to take the format of all my vlogs, people, so if you've tuned in for anything that's in the thumbnail, uh, please be aware that I will put a timestamp in for where those particular subject matters are, and then you can just jump straight to the part that interests you. Obviously, if I put this up as premiere, you can't do that during the premiere hour or however long I chat for, but if you watch it just after the premiere is finished, then I'll put the timestamps in and you'll be able to just jump to the bit that uh, that there's interest to you from the thumbnail people uh, in the beginning of these things I always have a little chit chat about what I've been doing on the channel and just my life in general just for a little bit and then we'll jump straight into what's in the thumbnail well not just the thumbnail but the description and what I've decided to chat about there's three main subjects as it happens and they're all very exciting and coming very soon people so I'm really excited about that and that was what triggered this particular vlog so it's always nice when I see news items pop up and I think I want to talk about about that I'm excited about that and so on and so forth and that's what's happened and that's why this is triggered along with having the two days off in an extended weekend because that's me had the Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and then back to work next week and I've still got I've still got tons of holiday to take actually before the end of July so yeah, it's going to be lots of these little things happening I think as the weather gets nice and now let me say this and let me say no more people because last time we did a flagons up Friday I wasn't actually having a flagon well bollocks to that today people <laughs> Flagons up to you all. There we are, people. My first flagon of the evening. And it is of an hour that I'm allowed to have a flagon. Well, it's cut. technically speaking, it's half an hour before my uh, <laughs> self-imposed don't have any drinks before five o'clock. But when I do these, I generally try and do them as early in the evening as I can. So it's half past four as it happens. Uh, so, yeah, it's been... I've not been doing a massive amount of recording I've kind of been doing a little bit here and there. Now, I've kind of discovered over the years that nobody wants to watch videos on a Monday and a Tuesday for some reason. And then whenever I post videos up on Monday and Tuesday, the viewing figures are dreadful compared to other viewing figures that I get. So I do tend not to post up videos on Mondays and Tuesdays unless I'm doing some sort of real crunch recording sessions. And I just want to get them all up there. So I tend to stick to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And my intention was, as I said earlier, that I was going to do some Dragon's Dogma 2 recording uh, between yesterday and today and over the weekend. And I still intend to do that. And I did, in fact, record a couple of episodes yesterday. And you got one of those episodes today? Uh, no, yesterday. So, yeah, because I recorded the episode, yes, two episodes yesterday. And when I finished recording the first episode, I rendered it together, started uploading it, and then I recorded the second session. Um, lots of good feedback on that again, which I'll bring up in the actual Dragon's Dogma 2 uh, next time I play it. So there was, however, a mighty frustration of... Uh, I got to... I recorded that part, it was great. And then in the set, in the part 11, which I haven't posted up yet, it is rendered together, but I'm reluctant to post it up as it is because it is an absolute nightmare. So basically what happened was I did, I did a quest which seems to be a main story quest where the captain that is in the inn in the main town, in the main city, in the main town, tells you to break into the, or sneak into the palace and find some evidence that uh, the princess is doing dodgy stuff or the queen or whatever she is. And I did that and I came out and it says, go back and see the captain. Uh, well, it doesn't say at the end, but it says, go back and see the captin. And I have Googled it and you are meant to go back to the inn. 
And I cannot get this guy to pitch up at the end. It doesn't matter what I do. I keep waiting and I keep waiting and I keep... I've tried reloading the game. I've slept over and over again. He, he just won't pitch up at the... Not the inn, sorry. The uh, Yeah, the inn. Well, whatever it's called. It's not an inn. It's uh, the pub. It's, I think it's called the Sun Something Inn or whatever. But it is definitely the right place because that's where he is every time you go and speak to him. But he just won't pitch up. And so I thought, right, I'll go and do something else. And I've got another quest in my uh, list, which is I had to do something for the guild and I had to collect all these weapons. And so I've done all of that and it's telling me to go back to the guild and speak to the guildmaster. And I'm just so confused because I go and speak to the guildmaster and this thing won't trigger a close of this quest. So I can't get that to go either. And I've actually, I'm at a position where I don't think I can do anything at the moment that is of any quest value because I can't, <laughs> nothing will sort of trigger me on. So I don't know what to do other than run out into the world and do other stuff, but I'm kind of goosed now. The only thing I can think of is that uh, the King Ratfella, who leaves a, a lot of comments on my Let's Plays, and thank you for that, King Ratfella, always appreciated. Uh, he, he was saying, because I was asking in one of the videos, what the hell are these wake stones all about? Why do we need these? I don't understand what the purpose of them are. That he's saying that sometimes NPCs that you need to push things forward can die, and you need a wake stone to bring them back to life, and then you can carry on. And I'm wondering if that's what's happened to this captain from the inn, because a massive troll invaded the square. And I can't remember if that's in the part that I posted up or in the part after. I think it, I think it is in part 11. It's the beginning of part 11, I think. A massive troll uh, invaded the, the main square in the town where the marketplace is. And there was a massive battle, killed it. And then I tried to do all this stuff. So I'm wondering, now that King Rat said that, that possibly this captain's lying dead somewhere and I need to go and find the body and use a wake stone to wake him up. There's a second problem with that is because I've, I used my wake stone just to see what it would do on some random person, <clears throat> uh, which was of no use to me. And I think I've got two parts of a wake stone. So I, need, I think it's three, isn't it? Is it three parts to get an actual three? I've got two shards, I think, to make a... I think it's three to make a wake stone. I can't remember. It's possible I could buy one. But anyway, I've got to find the bugger first. And on top of that, I can't get this bloody guild quest to finish either. So the point being, I didn't want to post up part 11 for today because I'm in half a mind to just sit down, start recording and just wander about and see if I can figure out what's happening. And I'll only speak and, you know, do stuff with involving you guys when I actually find stuff that is going to help me along. So I might end up with like two hours of recording, but only use five minutes of it. And then once I've got that, I can piece part 11 back together again with that recording as well and see where we got to with it. So that's my thought process at the moment, because at the moment, part 11 is just a lot of me wandering around going, why isn't this triggering? Why isn't that working? Why isn't this guy coming back? I keep sleeping and sleeping and he won't come. I mean, it's not an interesting watch. I mean, there is, excuse me, there is a few things in it that are good. The the battle with the troll in the town I had a massive fight with the griffin. Uh, so there was there was a bit either side of the beginning and the end that were quite good. But in the middle, it was just all over the place. I don't know how interesting it'll be to watch. So that's that's basically why I've not posted it up. Because I thought, well, if I do another recording, like I've just suggested, and try and figure out what's happening, then I can piece that together with part 11 and lop out some bits that are not very interesting to sit and watch. So that's my plan at the moment. So I probably, my next recording session is going to be Sunday as it happens. But... Uh, we will get back to it people and I'm thoroughly enjoying Dragon's Dogma and I was thoroughly enjoying it right up until that point but I was so frustrated recording that part 11 because I just couldn't get anything to progress and move forward so I was just wandering around this town with feck all to do uh, so I don't know what to do about it let me know in the comments below if you've come across this issue or whether I'm guessing right that this captain is lying dead somewhere and need to wake him up but it seems really stupid to me that you can kill characters in a game that you actually need to progress the game. I mean, that just seems madness. I mean, I know you can kill, you know, Elden Ring lets you kill pretty much anybody or, uh, but you know, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, all that sort of stuff. But I, I don't think it's anything that would stop you finishing the game. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, it just seems mental to me why you would let us kill somebody that we need. I mean, I suppose... That's why the wake stones exist. So it doesn't matter who you kill, you can bring them back to life. So it would just be a case of wandering the world until we find enough wake stone to uh, to, to wake them up. 
also would hope that there's an endless supply of wake stones, not all over the place, but because if, if you ever, I mean, if shops can sell them, then maybe there's an infinite amount in the game and you won't ever get stuck. But if there's only a, if there's a limited amount of wake stones in the game, then you could still end up being able to not finish the game if that's the case. Anyway, we'll see what's what. Let me know in the comments below if you know what's happening to me there. Because I can't get the guild quest to finish. It doesn't recognise that I've got all these weapons. Uh, and I can't find this guy. He just won't pitch up in the inn again. So there you are. But that's what I've been on with. And that's the only gaming I've done. Uh, outside of that, it's been me and Max, really, just doing our thing. And Max is uh, he's down here. And he's having a proper snooze, people. I was meant to do some recording of that recording of Dragon's Dogma today, actually. To see if I could figure it out. I took Max for a big walk in the morning and went off to do the weekly shop because I thought I'll do it this morning instead of Saturday morning. And then I came back and I was like, I don't want to sit and do a vlog with the house. The way. I mean, it wasn't. My house is always tidy, but it was one of those like because I've now got Max, like there's dog air everywhere. And like <laughs> the floors in the kitchen are all like mega manky and mucky and in the hall from bringing him in and out. And I just thought I'm going to clean up a bit. And that ended up being a bit of a three-hour session, just hoovering and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I feel great now that it's done and I can sit and enjoy my house. But that kind of used up the time that I was going to use to do Dragon's Dogma 2 recording. So here we are. We're ready for a vlog, people. So shall we get into some uh, some news, people, shall we? I can't think of anything else in my life that's been particularly interesting. Well, I can update you on Max, I suppose. Um, he's been doing really, really well. I can't remember where we were up to the last time we chatted. I feel like the last time I did a vlog, I hadn't tried him off the lead yet. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. However, about a week and a half to two weeks ago, on the Monday, I bumped into a regular dog walker who has three dogs, him and his wife. And they just happened to be starting their walk at one of the big fields where I take Max, a sort of big area down there with fields and pathways and all sorts. And um, he said, oh, have you tried him off the lead yet? I was like, no, oh, no, I don't feel ready for it yet. And he was like, well, you don't want to leave it too late, you know. Um, but, you know, why don't you try him off the lead? Well, the other dogs are here and he'll play with them. So I thought, right, let's do it. So off he, I took him off the lead and off he went. And he was playing with the three dogs who are all older than he is. So, you know. Um, and then from that, that gave me the confidence to then try on my own with him off the lead in one of the big fields at the back. And I've been doing it every, every day ever since. I've been taking him up there I've been doing recall with him and I've you know I mean I was doing recall with him anyway before that but uh he I mean at this age they're kind of likely not to run off on you because they're they're as much not wanting to you lose you as you are them but once he locks onto something it, he can be completely blinkered and not hear anything I'm saying and that's it I mean he's always I so that's been a week about a week and a half to two yeah I think it's a week and a half or thereabouts two weeks where I've been taking him up there. But I've been gradually getting more and more brave with him. So I've been taking him up. And up. Initially, it was just walking around the field with him, calling him back, all that sort of stuff. Then I thought, I'll try going over to this path and just walk up here a little bit while I can't see anybody. And then I found little hidden bits in the back where there was a big pond and he's been splashing about in the water and all that. And it's brilliant because he can burn off far more energy when he's off the lead, obviously, than when he's on it. So it's been absolutely fantastic. And initially, when he spotted a couple of other dogs He'd bolt for them. He'd never bolt on me. I mean, he, he wouldn't go anywhere, but he goes to that other dog or person and wants to play with them and be friendly. Uh, but later on, and even today, I am managing to get his recall to, to the point where he starts dashing towards them. And I, I, I shout at him about, well, not at him, but I shout, you know, Max come or Max heal or whatever. Uh, and eventually he will stop and he'll turn and, and head back to me. And then it'll get him to try and stay with me. And I've got little biscuits and stuff in my pocket to try and make him stay with me as we wander the other way. So it's been brilliant. He's, he's, he's getting there. But if he gets super close to the dog, like if he's close close to the dogs, he, there's no turning him back. He will go over. But we're getting there. It's been really, really good. And I've really enjoyed the walks with him off the lead, I have to say. And I keep like, even on the other paths, when I start walking him back, if it's really quiet, the, the sort of the last number of days, I've been taking him off again and letting him get a bit of freedom on the paths, getting used to the paths. And it's all up behind the houses and sort of uh, walk areas. So there's no roads or anything to worry about. So it's been brilliant. And he's been absolutely fantastic. But considering he's only, he's turning five months 
in five days. He was born on the 17th of November, so that's 12th. So yeah, five months in five days. Uh, and considering he's just approaching five months, I think he's doing superb. He's doing really, really well. And it's a blessing that he is a really friendly dog and that he wants to go and just say hello to other dogs. The problem isn't Max saying hello so much as it's how's the other dog going to react because not every dog likes that. Uh, I'd say that... I'd say 90% of the dogs that he's gone up to are all friendly, but there are a few that get snarly, and that is what it is. Like, some dogs just don't like it. So it's really the only reason that I don't want that to happen without me having any control on it is that, is the reaction of the other dog. But, yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic. So there you are. So that's the Max update. Uh, Outside of that, uh, I've still been taking him to his puppy play once a week on the Mondays, apart from Easter Monday when I couldn't take him, and he loves that. Although there was, <laughs> there was the I was I was sort of standing all proud at the puppy play because Max was the only puppy I think that I know of that hadn't peed or pooed in the puppy play, and Max has never pooed in my house. Like he knew the minute he was in here. But I don't know the breeder that that I got him from. Obviously, I don't know what he'd done with him, but he Max would not poo in this house. I had probably about six or seven wee accidents with him. And then once we had a bit of a showdown, <laughs> that was it. We didn't um, we didn't have any more peas either. I've not had to watch him for the toilet for a good five weeks, probably even longer. It might even be six weeks now. I've not had to watch him at all for the toilet, which makes working and chilling and doing this sort of stuff dead easy. Because it doesn't matter if he wanders away. I know he's not going to do the toilet anywhere. He just won't do it in this house. But that said, we were at the puppy play on Monday and I was literally having a conversation with a woman who's a regular there and her dog's actually Max's biggest playmate. He loves him. And I was just saying to her, well, I can't believe how lucky I've been with him with the toilet stuff. I said, he's just been incredible and I've had to watch him for six weeks. And like, and just to, this was about five minutes before puppy play was finishing. And then I heard somebody say, oh no, Max is going to do, <laughs> do, do poo. And I was like, what? And I turned around and he was doing, he'd gone to the corner and he was doing a massive dump in the corner of the room. I was like, I was like, where the earth did that come from? Jesus Christ. I mean, even, uh, I think, two two puppy plays before that, I took him out after it had finished and he went straight to the field and did one. Like, he knows not to do it in there. So he must have been super desperate to have to do it in the room at that point in time. But what can you do? It was one of those things. Just had to pick it up and get rid of it straight away. But, yeah, I was, I was mortified. I was like, no. <laughs> So hopefully we'll... Uh, I mean, the thing is, I'd taken him to the grass before that and he'd done a wee before we went in and, you know, he, he maybe he was too excited and didn't want to get a poo out of the way before he went in. But anyway, it was just one of those. I think maybe it just he just couldn't hold it in any longer. And because you're in a, a strange environment, like here he can go to the back door and I know that he needs out. But even at that, he will not do the toilet in this house. But, you know, the big open room like that with all the dogs playing and he's seen other dogs doing it in there. So you don't know what's going through their minds. But there's no way of him saying, I need to go outside to do this poo because there's two doors to get outside for a start and he wouldn't remember which one it is that probably takes him out. So it is what it is. So we'll see how we got on this week. But he's never peed in that room though, still. So that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying he must have been in a really bad way to... I mean, there was a lot came out of him as well, to be fair. It was weird, though, because I don't feed it. I, I deliberately don't feed him. He gets a late dinner. that It's at 7 o'clock, uh, the thing, the, the puppy play. And I don't give him his dinner till 9. So we do puppy play till quarter to 8. Then we get back, and then I give him his dinner at 9. That, that's part of the reason I deliberately never fed him. I thought, I don't want him um, needing the toilet or anything beforehand. So he gets a late dinner that day. So it was, yeah, it was just a strange one, but it was just mortified. I was like, can't believe we've just been standing still with our chest out going, oh, my dog will never do the toilet. <laughs> so there you are, people. Hey, eh? there you are. Full of surprises, but he, he has been brilliant. I couldn't have asked for a better puppy, though. Right, should we get on to some game talk, people? So we do have, I'm going to flag us up to you all once again, people, once again. Whoa. That was nice, people. I've, I've just spotted across the living room. I must have bumped. I've got like a CD holder that spins around. Holds about, um, I'm spinning around. Well, that's this that, That's this video copyright. No, no. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it, yeah, spinny, a spinneroony CD holder. And on top of it, it's got my uh, 
No, you'll have seen it in one of my videos in there because I've shown off my living room before multiple times. But basically, there's two dwarven statues from Lord of the Rings, and in between them are all my steel books, all my steel book games. And I've just noticed that I'm, when I was cleaning, I must have bashed it, and the <laughs> the dwarves are all squint, the, the the steel cases are all squint, and the little candle at the front's been pushed into them. And it's really annoying my OCD now that I'm recording this. I'm not going to get up and fix it, people. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and stay with it. I'm going to try. And stay with it. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do when I stand up from this video is lunge at it and fix it. But there you are. So we have three main topics, people. You know I'd share it with you if I could, people. We have three main topics, people. And I've got uh, little articles for each of them. Let me old, gla old man glasses on, eh? eh? Uh, what order have I put these in, people? What order? So... We have, okay, first up we'll go with uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which I must get back and play all the way through, people. Everyone keeps telling me to. Aaron Brew played it and said it was the best game he played in a long, long time. And we need to, uh, and a lot of you have said the same thing, but I, uh, it was one of those games, they can't be frustrating as a let's play because you can find yourself kind of wandering aimlessly trying to find out and figure out how to do things. But actually it was going pretty well. I didn't feel like I was hooked enough. Uh, I mean, I was enjoying it, but I wasn't kind of hooked and gripped into it. And so when something else came along that I jumped into, and I can't remember what it was, I never went back to it, and, and then other things kept happening. So I do know that I do need to get back to it, though. Um, but anyway, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 has swept up, swept up, sweep, swept up all of the awards. Well, some of the a bit a large amount of the awards people uh, five awards at the BAFTA awards and this is coming from the BBC's article Baldur's Gate 3 has won five awards at the 20th edition of the BAFTA game awards in central London the game by Larian Studios picked up the awards for best game best music players choice best narrative and best supporting performer Anna Wake 2 and Viewfinder have picked up two awards each I'm not sure what Viewfinder is uh, the ceremony celebrated developers, artists, actors and composers. There were 40 games in the running across 17 categories. Gaming is big business in the UK. Sales topped 4.7 billion last year. More than double that of the music industry. Yeah. And then Disney yeah, says, despite that, uh, there was thousands of job losses and layoffs, which I still think is absolutely ridiculous, people. I mean, there should be some very shameful management out there. Uh, using these people to make them obscene amounts of money and then just sacking them all. It's just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so there you are. So I'm I'm actually really chuffed for Larian Studios because it's not like a AAA developer per se, but they have, in effect, ch churned out a AAA title. Now, you might argue that people's, people's thought process as to what a AAA title is can differ. But for me, that is a medium-sized studio pushing out a AAA title because you can't say that a game that good hasn't met AAA standards, surely, you know. But I know that some people will say, oh, AAA is like movie, budget, bloody massive, you know, I get it. But uh, yeah, I think it's fantastic. I love seeing a studio of that size just smash all the big ones out of the water, which is superb. I've just remembered another topic as well, which uh, I'm going to jot down here so that I don't forget at the end. Um, I don't have an article for it. I, I just jot it down quickly, people. There we are. Yeah, so there you are. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Baldur's Gate 3 uh, because I think that's fantastic. And I will absolutely get back to that game and give it a proper good playing through, people. A second up, Star Wars Outlaws got a proper... Uh, well, another reveal trailer and a actual release date, people. We knew it was coming this year. We knew it was coming. I think we knew it was coming in summer, but we didn't know exactly when. But we now know that it is coming out on the 30th of August of this very year, people. And I've got two articles here that we're going to run through because I wanted to refresh what we know about it as well. Now, here's the thing, right? So this this first bit I'm reading out, this is me just on the Bethesda, uh, Bethesda, what am I talking about? Get ahead of myself. Ubisoft store, just looking at the options, right? So you can pre-order this game. And do I need to have these on for this bit? Probably not. So you can pre-order this game and there are several editions. However, what they're saying is if you pre-order the two more expensive editions, you can get access to the game early 
and but for about three three days early or something. <clears throat> now, for my liking, that's really not great. Uh, I don't like it when you punish people that don't have that kind of money that might be able to squeeze out the standard version of your game to buy it. You're punishing them for not being able to afford the the higher versions and I think it's poor like I don't think you should do that at all and for me if you pre-order the game you should get the I mean I'm not saying like if you pre-order the game you should get the same uh, sort of extra you know the, the, the album of music or uh, extra things to wear and that that's fine I get all that stuff but to actually give people three days access early because they've spent more money to me is that's not great it, like you shouldn't punish people for not being able to afford the the, the bigger ver the, the more expensive versions i think i think it's fair to say that if you pre-order the game at all then you'll get it three days early i think that is superb but for me i don't think you should be punishing your fan base and you're punishing two fan bases you're, you're punishing star wars fan base and you're punishing gaming fan base and you well three you're punishing Ubisoft fan base. So I think for my liking, um, pro they probably won't change it. But for me, I think they should change that and say that anybody that pre-orders the game will get it three days early. <clears throat> I don't think you should be forcing people um, or making making people feel left out because they can't afford the extra thirty to fifty quid to buy an enhanced version of the game. So yeah, uh, it's not it's a bit poor that. But anyway, here we go. The standard version is fifty nine ninety nine. A lost track here, people. Then you've got the gold edition, which is the first edition where you can get three days early access. Uh, I mean, if you look at the standard edition, it's basically the base game and a pre order bonus, which uh, doesn't. The pre order bonus, a cosmetic pack for your speeder, and a cosmetic for the tra Trailblazer spaceship. So you're getting a couple of cosmetics. So you're getting a little something, but still, I think you should still be getting the early access. The gold edition is ninety four ninety nine. people. I mean, that is... It's ridiculous. I mean, it feels... I know it's not double, but it feels like double. It feels like, you know... <laughs> I mean, that is insane. Uh, you're getting the base game, the pre-order bonus, three days early access, and the season pass. So you're getting the full season pass with it, but what's in that... Uh, do we know? Does it say? Star Wars Outlaw Season Pass. Two DLCs that will release after launch. Keeps exploring the world of Star Wars Outlaws with all the new stories, quests, and areas to discover. The Jabba's Gambit exclusive mission available at launch. The Kessel Runner character pack featuring additional cosmetics for Kian Nick. Kian uh, Nick, sorry. I should have left my glasses on, people, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> what am I doing, people? Put, put them on for a purpose. Yeah, Kay and Nick's. So, for me, I mean, that is... I mean, I, that DLC better be good for an extra 30 quid. Fucking hellfire. Uh, well, two DLCs. But anyway, you know, it's a massive lump of money to get through. I mean, I'm not going to be paying 95 quid just to get the game three days early because it's not a game I'll play on the channel. I don't think anyone's going to be remotely interested in seeing me play Star Wars Outlaws on the channel. Not a proper RPG, is it? Uh, and then you've got the Ultimate Ultimate Edition, which is uh, base game, pre-order bonus, three days early access, season pass, a rogue infiltrator bundle, sabak shark bundle, and digital art book. So, you know, I mean, for me, fucking hell, like, you used to spend that kind of money and you'd get a proper fucking ornament and shit, you know what I mean? And now all you're getting is some digital shite that's going to be redundant after about a week. It's absolute madness. A uh, Infiltrator bundle, including cosmetics for Kay and Nyx, the Speeder, and the Trailblazer spaceship. Yeah, it's just... Bundles of shit that makes shit look different. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. 115 quid, man. I'd be expecting a fucking ornament of my spaceship or something. So there you go. Anyway, I mean, I am excited for the game-ish. I'm not sure how I'm going to be with a Star Wars game that's not a Jedi game. Because I absolutely loved Jedi Survivor. I mean, it was a technical disaster when it came out. 
But once they patched it and, and got it playable, I I adored that game. I really did. And it was so it was so much better than the Fallen Order. I mean, Fallen Order was great as well. I loved that game as well. I platinumed it, in fact. Uh, but uh, Jedi Survivor for me was even better. Uh, it was superb. The story was great. The side missions were great. Uh, the customizations were a lot, lot better. Uh, I mean, everything about the game was just Fallen Order made better. Uh, so yeah superb absolutely loved it and I don't know how I'm going to feel about doing something that looks I know it's open world but it looks very similar but I've got a blaster instead of a of, of all the Jedi Jedi shit going on so and I've got a live creature instead of a robot so I don't know and the fact that it's Ubisoft kind of makes me wary as well because it's very rare that Ubisoft makes something that I think is amazing they make good games but they never make great games and that's the way that I see them there are a few exceptions to that rule of recent years one of which was Phoenix Rising which I thought was an outstanding game and I still haven't finished it I actually enjoyed that game more than I enjoyed Zelda Tears of the Kingdom um, I absolutely loved uh, Phoenix Rising uh, so that was an exception I thought it was a superb game uh, and then I get that the latest Assassin's Creed have been super popular uh, but they took time out and they, they went away and they stopped churning shit out year after year and they went away and they had a what, three, two, three year break before they came back with the Origins one and then used that as a platform to do the Egyptian one and then used that to do the uh, Greek one, I think. Or was Origins the... No, Origins wasn't the Egyptian one. I can't remember now. Anyway, they've done really, really well with Assassin's Creed ones of recent uh, recent times. So they have done some good there. But, and Far Cry, the, the Far Cry studio, like when Far Cry came out, I mean, that was a superb game and got really, really good um, reviews. Uh, sorry, hang on a minute. Far Cry 4, was it? Yeah, Far Cry 4, when that came out, that got that got really good reviews and stuff. So, yeah, so there are studios that kind of up their game from time to time for them. But in the main part, I just see them as they, they just kind of churn out good stuff, but it's never great. It's kind of like when I talk about how good The Witcher is, that when it sends you on side quests, they're super interesting. The, the, the places they take you are interesting. The story is interesting. The characters are interesting. The dialogue, everything is just engrossing. You play an Ubisoft game and it's just the same shit over and over again to do side quests. There's like there's like very little of interest in them. And that's where a, a game is either good or it's great. Like and, and for me, I can't think of an Ubisoft. Other than Phoenix Rising, kind of. I'm not saying that the side quests were particularly mind-blowing from a story perspective or anything or or matching Witcher. But what they did have was the, the challenge tombs, which just made it absolutely brilliant to and the unlocks you got from doing them and having to have certain moves to get through them and it was just brilliant all of that stuff was just really really engrossing um so yeah i mean for me it's like uh it just feels like another star wars game that's going to be open world that's going to have a bunch of fucking side quests to do that aren't going to be particularly interesting but are going to give me experience points that get me to unlock something in my menu or something <laughs> you know what i mean whereas my jedi survivor has some really good side quests but prove me wrong, Ubisoft, please do. But everything I'm seeing about the clip, the, the trailers for that game and um, the open worldness of it and everything I'm seeing just smells of massive open world, but not a huge amount of very interesting things to do. And that's the problem with making an open world game full stop. Never mind a Star Wars one. You're like, you've got to make shit interesting. Like, you know, Jedi Survivor, I went into a cave just to have a look around and ended up fighting one of those fucking... Tra no, no, tra I was going to say Trancor. What are they called? The, the big thing that Luke Skywalker fights in Return of the Jedi when he falls into the pit. I'm fighting one of those fucking things. <laughs> I think it was, it was a really early level as well. I was like, fucking hell, am I going to beat that? I don't think I beat it. I think I had to come back later and beat it. Um... But yeah, I mean, you really want to find shit that's like, what is happening? What's going on? Uh, and, and that's the sort of shit that will make an open world game superb. And to some degree, Elden Ring did that pretty well. But even they lost it at the sort of semi-bosses, if you know what I mean. The ones that were in caves and stuff. Because every cave ended up feeling the same. And, it, and then it had a big fucking door at the end with a creature in it. It's like, why is there a door at the end of every cave with a creature in it? Like, this makes no sense to this world. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, give me something that makes sense and a surprise or, you know, not, oh, oh I've gone into this cave. I bet you there's a fucking creature behind the door at the end of it. So even that lost it because it's open world. Like, they, at some point, they must run out of time and go, right, well, we can't have a different fucking thing going on in every cave. It'll have to be some sort of format we've got for it. So it is what it is, but I do feel like it's not going to be super fucking interesting side quests and all that sort of stuff i have every intention of getting the game i've got every intention of, of well unless the reviews come out and they're bloody awful but i i love the star wars universe anyway it's set between uh star wars, uh, empire strikes back and jedi i think but we're going to have a look at that now we're going to read the uh the other article that i had uh, yeah, i jotted down one that was just uh, refreshing as of everything we know this is from games raider props to them star wars outlaws will see us swapping our lightsabers for blaster guns in the franchise's first open world game star wars outlaws is going to take us to a galaxy far far away in the first ever open world game set in the star wars universe as one of the biggest upcoming ubisoft games on the way we recently got confirmation of an official release date along with the uh, with another look at the adventure set between empire strikes back and return of the jedi thanks to a fresh Star Wars Outlaws story, te- story trailer. Showing off Scoundrel, Ki- Scoundrel K. Vess, who will be filling of the shoes of. We see her trying to navigate the dangerous underbelly of the Outer Rim, with some familiar faces like Jabba the Hutt making an appearance. Among a slate of exciting upcoming Star Wars games on the way, alongside the likes of Star Wars Eclipse, Star Wars Outlaws has fast become one of the most anticipated new games of 2024. And with more reveals of the new adventures, ooh, hello, new adventures, we're getting a clearer picture of what's in store. Sorry, then my, my browser on the phone started doing weird shit. I think it's because of the adverts on the webpage. Reputation, for example, is going to be everything as we try to deal with crime syndicates with our trusty and adorable sidekick, Nix. For a full recap of everything we know so far about Star Wars, I'm going to read on below. So yeah, so uh, all in all, I mean, I'm, 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 I, I really, really, really hope they prove me wrong. I really do. I hope this is a super interesting game, and you can't wait to keep exploring the whole world. But I don't know. It just feels like when you launch a game and you've got season pass, two DLCs coming, like it's just already feeling like you just want to milk the fucker. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It means that we've got a Star Wars right, so let's milk this fucker of all we can before the things even come out. Um, I, it always bugs me when I see it when they say buy the game you get the season pass it's like oh god's sake they're already trying to fucking milk me and I've not even got the game yet to see if I like it so I mean you could spend 115 quid to make sure you get all the DLC and what have you play the game and fucking hate it <laughs> just wasted 115 quid for fuck's sake so yeah but I do hope they prove me wrong because I would be. It would be really, really cool to have uh, a game that is more of a non-Jedi, but in the Star Wars universe. I just don't know how interesting that is going to be because there's so much interesting stuff around a Jedi. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, it is what it is. If you feel like you're soaked in the Star Wars universe when you're doing it and everything, and, and the music's great and the vibe's great and you're having fun with it and stuff, and yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, fingers crossed it's a good one. Uh, I will probably not pre-order it. Uh, I mean, if I do, it'll be days before. I mean, I honestly, I feel like, and we can look back on this video, I feel like there'll be an embargo on this fucker until like two minutes before it's out. <laughs> Because because they just, you know, like, it's going to be a 7 out of 10 or something and they don't want everyone knowing it's a 7 out of 10. That's how I feel at the moment. But it's because it's Ubisoft. It's always the way I feel with Ubisoft. So anyway, anyway, fingers crossed. I really, really hope. I'm looking forward to another Star Wars game that is going to be really, really good. So bring it on. I'm hoping, you know, I mean, the Harry Potter game was like that. I was expecting that to be all kinds of six and sevens, but it's done really well. It got eights and nines, I think, but it's done really, really well. It's really held its own. Um, and all in all, it got really high praise. So uh, another movie franchise that's done really well into a game, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, so yeah, really, really excited for that. Uh, well, <laughs> semi, semi excited for that, I should say. So here we are, people. At the end of this month is my birthday, my Gbertstag. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not right, is it? 
Have I forgotten what uh, birthday is in German? My Geburtstag. That's I've made that up, people. That's a, that's a word I've made up, surely. <laughs> Lived in Germany for 13 years. Can't speak a word of it, people. Eine bisschen, ja? Eine Big Mac, bitte? <laughs> Eine Bier. Eine großen Bier. Yeah, there you go. I'm giving you all the good stuff, people. The stuff that you're going to need when you actually get there. Eine Big Mac, Eine Bier. <laughs> Yeah, you stick with me, kids, eh? Eh? You learn. It's, it's every day's a school day on this channel. Right. Moving swiftly on. A, yes, at the end of the month is my birthday. 27th, people. And two days before this, people, we have just discovered that the Fallout 4 new gen... Da well, yeah, it's, it's just an update, isn't it, really? <laughs> we want to call it more than it is, but it is, in fact, a new-gen update for the game, which is going to bring new-gen graphics and frame rates and what have you to the already existing Fallout 4 game. So if you've got the game already, it is going to be... It will have a, an update for it, which will download. It's absolutely free, and if you've got a PS5 or a PlayStation... Uh, or a, uh, Xbox Series X or S, you will get the enhancements suitable for that console. Now, it sounds like going by the... Now, this is awesome, right? Now, I've, I played Fallout 4 FPS Boost. Boost! And uh, it's on the channel, in fact. I think there's about nine parts of it or something like that. And it plays beautifully at 60 FPS for, for all of its... Uh, in all of its glory. However, we were stuck on 1080p, of course. So it didn't look at its crispest, but it did play really smooth. So I'm hoping that we'll get 1440p at 60 FPS. I can't see it being 4K at 60, uh, but it does say, well, we'll go into this article now, actually. Uh, which one are we doing first? So this is the this is the Bethesda official site. Fallout 4 is getting free updates. Uh, Fallout 4 upgrades are coming to next gen consoles. Bethesda Game Studios is releasing a free Fallout 4 update for download on Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5. This free update includes native applications for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, S performance mode and a quality mode setting. Uh, performance mode and quality mode settings, as well as Stability improvements and fixes, experience up to 60 FPS and increased resolutions. Now that doesn't tell us exactly what we're getting, does it? <laughs> and, and that's the only thing that's kind of concerning me a little bit. They're not being very specific about the consoles. They're simply telling us that we're going to get visual improvement, uh, yeah, graphic improvements, and we're going to get 60 FPS. But we're not saying what the combination of those two things are. So we've yet to see. Now, quality mode is absolutely going to have to be. I mean, without any shadow of a doubt, quality mode is going to be 30 FPS locked, I would have thought, at 4K. I can't imagine it being anything else, certainly on the X and certainly on the PlayStation 5. And the I'm really like, if, if the performance mode isn't 1440p and it's 60 FPS, if it's 1080p, then what was the point? Because you've already got FPS boost on the xbox so we already had that so there has to be an improvement on graphics for the xbox series x and s surely so i wouldn't understand why they would do that in order to not just because that would be like well you can turn a, you can turn fps boost off now but you're still getting 60 fps at 1080p it was like well i'm gonna add that with fps on what was the point of <laughs> what was the point other than making it okay making PlayStation players be able to get 60 FPS. So that that would confuse me if that's the case. So, fingers crossed, we're going to get 1440p at 60 FPS or thereabouts. Uh, Fallout 4 players on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will also receive free update with stability improvements, login and quest fixes. Uh, to download the update on the next generation console, you must own Fallout 4 for that device, which I do. I own it, in fact, on both devices. Uh, well, I'll read this out. We don't really do PC on this channel, but we'll see what's what. We are also releasing a free Fallout 4 update for PC players. Experience Fallout 4 on your next generation PC with widescreen and ultra widescreen support, as well as fixes to creation kit and a variety of quest updates. Players with PC versions of Fallout 4 on Steam, Microsoft Store and GOG 
will receive stability mods and bug fixes for Japanese and Chinese language players on PC. Bethesda.net login issues have been resolved, fixing access to mods. Alongside this exciting update, Fallout 4 will be available to purchase on the Epic Games Store. Fallout 4 will also be Steam Deck verified. That's quite cool. Yeah, the Steam Deck's Steam Deck has been really popular, isn't it? Super popular. I was, I was watching a, was a digital foundry. And they were talking about the fact that Microsoft look like they're, they're, they're looking at uh, releasing some sort of handhold device, which is just that would that would be very surprising to me. I mean, I kind of, I mean, I don't know. I th- I felt like Microsoft had accepted that people just game on phones now, and even PlayStation don't want to do a handhold device now. They're just doing that thing that Wi-Fi's to your existing PS5, so you can play in the house on a on a handheld. But they're not doing a handheld anymore. So I don't know, I'm not sure what that's all about. Unless unless they're doing a Steam Deck type device, in which case any PC game will play on it. Well, you know, that's been tweaked for it. In which case I get it, you know, because they are kind of going down that route now, Microsoft, where everything is every platform. Anyway, interesting one. Uh, even more content. There's even more content in Fallout 4 updates, including the following free creation club items. Enclave Remnants. Enclave Remnants brings the pre-war cabal, the Enclave, into the Fallout 4 storyline. In this new quest, Echoes of the Past, uh, can can you stop the Enclave from spreading their dangerous ideology and gaining a foothold in the Commonwealth? Uh, I'm not overly sure about... I can't actually remember what the Creation Club things are all about. So I'm not sure why they didn't just do it as part of the main story or whatever. Like the main game. Uh, along with workshop items and the Enclave c- Colonel uniform, we are including the following previously released Creation Club content. Enclave weapon skins, Enclave armor skins, Tesla cannon, Hellfire power armor, XO2 power armor, heavy incinerator. Uh, makeshift weapon pack. Ever thought a piggy bank would make a great weapon in a pinch. This weapon pack includes a variety of unconventional objects that have been transformed into deadly or deadly weapons, such as a baseball launcher, a nail gun, and a piggy bank. Uh, Halloween workshop. Uh, leftover from the an ill-fated Halloween party thrown by the New England Technocrat, Technocrat Society. These 38 new Halloween decorations include witches, cauldrons, ghouls, and more. Decorate for Halloween or make your settlement spooky all year round. And there you are, people. So, yeah, it's quite cool. Like I, I do love seeing stuff like that. I mean, if you consider like Fallout 4, it's a fucking PS4 game. You know, it's like... And seeing companies not just disregard it and say, right, that's done, that's in the past, let's just do loads of new stuff. I do love it when they add... I mean, some people will argue like, oh, what are they wasting time on that for when they can just be making new games? But I kind of I kind of like that they do that. Like, when a game's really good as well, like, why not keep it alive through generations? I've done it with Skyrim over and over again. But why not keep it alive? Especially when it's, you know, you can make it a lot, a lot better looking and nicer to play. And, I mean, there's so much to do in these games. There's so many different ways to play it. Yeah, about what the hell, you know, give us all you can. So I'm I'm really delighted that that's coming. I'm really delighted it's coming um, around my birthday time as well. Oh, hello. Max has woken up and started peeing. You can see his legs in the camera. I think I disturbed his sleep and now he's gone back to sleep again. He's resting his little head on my leg as I'm speaking. It does, it is a really nice warm fuzzy feeling having a dog that cuddles up to you, I have to say. Um, what was the second article on Fallout 4? I... Yeah, I don't know why I had both of these, actually, but anyway. Never you mind, I think we'll ignore the fact I had two. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, they're both Bethesda links, so I don't know why I did that. So we'll, uh, we'll ignore it, people. I think we've said all we need to say. And then the thing that I remembered earlier, which was uh, something that Aaron Brew mentioned to me. I haven't read any articles on it, and I haven't gone digging about it. But apparently, Dead Space 2 Remake has been shelved. It's not happening because they didn't sell enough copies of Dead Space Remake. So I'm not bothered about it, really. I mean, I I think anyone that watches the channel knows that 
I mean, I stand alone in many of my uh, opinions. <laughs> However, uh, I actually preferred Callisto Protocol to playing the remake of Dead Space. I, I felt like I was playing something fresh and new with Callisto Protocol. I really enjoyed the gameplay once I wrapped my head around it. I, I loved the new world, the new... Yeah, I just, I loved it. I really loved it. And I was really gutted that it got such a hard time. Um, but, and we're not getting another one either because it's done now. The guy who's, the guy who was in the studio that did Dead Space and all that originally is gone now. He's gone off to do other stuff because it just wasn't going to happen with, with Callisto Protocol 2 or whatever it would have been called. So I haven't actually played the DLC for it. Uh, there was some good DLC for it apparently that kind of tidies up the story a bit. So I need to go and do that. But, yeah, I mean, I did get a really good fun out of Dead Space. Uh, did I? Uh, yeah, I platinumed it. I'm sure I did. If I, yeah, I did. I'm sure I platinumed it. Went out of my way to do it, in fact. Yeah, because I didn't... I haven't platinumed Callisto, but I have platinumed Dead Space. That's what it is. So I platinumed Dead Space Remake. In fact, it's the last game I did platinum, I'm pretty sure. Um... So I got a lot of fun out of it. I really enjoyed it. I loved the differences that were put in place. I loved the fact that it was proper flying around and not the silly vaulting yourself across rooms. So all of kind of what they did was right. And the, oh, the Kinesis was like Dead Space 2s and not shite like the first one. So a lot of what they did was great and it was really good fun. Uh, but I there was something about it because, and maybe this is because I've played Dead Space so much now because I, I I maxed them out on the Xbox, uh, I platinumed it on the PlayStation. Uh, I mean, I just you know anyone that knows this channel knows they're my favourite games of all time apart from three, which was just a clusterfuck of a nightmare. But, but I still got some fun out of it, but it was just what was that all about? So I'm not gutted. Uh, would I have got it and bought it day one and played it? Yeah, of course I would. Um, but I just, with the original one, I just felt like the, the, like the movement wasn't exactly the same and it didn't feel exactly, like the, the feeling moving him around and stuff just didn't feel the same and it didn't feel like the same reactions that you got. Like I felt like the gameplay was, was much crisper in the originals when it came to actually, you know, plasma cutter and shit and, and doing what you're doing. So I don't know. And I, I do feel like if you've never played the originals and you played that game, you wouldn't. Obviously, you're not going to care, and it would have felt fine. But I think because I'd played it so much, it felt off. Like having something that was just slightly not caliber, you know, calib calibrated right or something. But outside of that, it was it was great, great fun, and I really enjoyed playing through it. Uh, and it would have been nice to have Dead Space Two remade, but it's not the end of the world. I'm not I'm not gutted or anything. Um, I'm more than happily go back and replay them as they are on back and pat. I mean, they play fucking superb and they're really beautiful games. They just, I was surprised when they did it anyway because I thought, well, these get the Dead Space one was different because it did need that, you know, the kinesis from two brought into it and just making it as smooth as two was, and and, and they did that. But I feel like Dead Space 2, like what, what are you gaining by remaking this game other than it's going to look shinier? Because it was perfect, that game for me. Uh, and sure, <laughs> if the people that originally made it, Visceral, were, were going to do a proper remake of it or something, then I'd be excited. But nah, I'm, I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. But let me know in the comments below about that or any of the subjects I've just been talking about, people. What are you excited for? Are you excited for Star Wars Outlaws? Are you excited for Fallout 4 uh, Enhanced or whatever we're going to call it? Uh, new gen upgrades? And uh, yeah, you got it about Dead Space 2 not being remade or are you cool with it? Let me know, people, in the comments below. Or just chat to me about anything you like, people, if you really want to. Well, I've gone on for nearly an hour, people. Good grief. <clears throat> I think that's all I have for you, people. Considering we only had three subject matters, we've gone on for a fair bit, haven't we? Hmm. I'm sure by the time this is posted up, I'll have found some nice footage to go along with me blabbering on, people. I've actually enjoyed that once again, people. It's been really good. I'm, I'm surprised that what was that for it's about four months or something i didn't do it. no it was the yeah well it was the first of december was the last vlog that i did before the last one which was two weeks ago so yeah it was about three three uh, yeah four four ish four ish three three to four months since we'd done one um 
And then, to be fair, I hadn't had a flagon in all of that time anyway. And I, I in fact, wasn't having a flagon in the last... <laughs> Anyway, it's nice to be back doing a Flaggers Up Friday with an actual flagon, people. So hopefully you've been able to watch this at a suitable hour where you can have a flagon as well while you're, while you're watching with me. Well, there you are. Anyway, let me know in the comments below about any of the things I've been talking about, people. And just let me know in the comments below if you want to chit-chat about anything. In fact, let me know in the comments below about any of this Dragon's Dogma nightmare that I'm having as well. Because I love the game. I just want to be able to progress with it, people. So let me know about that if you if you can. Well, there you go, folks. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you once again in this vlog of mine. And I shall catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, folks. Bye. Okay. Ourselves a vlog, pal.